turn off camera shake. Turn your camera shake off, my guy. Turn off camera shake, trust. Don't use default settings. Uh, just a tip, uh, turn camera shake off. This is a good tip, please turn off camera shake. Alright, I'm Scully and today we're going to play Rocket League with camera shake turned on. When I first started playing Rocket League, I did so with the uh, default camera settings turned on, which includes camera shake. Now, I never really noticed camera shake, and actually I, I still don't to this day. I need to look really hard at like pre-recorded footage to be able to spot if camera shake is turned on. Which I recognise is definitely not the case for other people, uh, but for me, I really cannot spot it. So I was playing with it turned on for quite a while, uh, but I did eventually turn it off after enough people moaning at me on my stream. Fast forward a couple of years and I've started putting YouTube shorts out, which are clips from my stream, which means that the older clips from my Rocket League with camera shake turned on are being shown. And just like before, people are commenting, like you just saw, that I should turn it off. Saying things like, God damn, I picked this game up a year ago. I'm D2. Change your cam settings and you will be better. Not a fan of your settings. Uh, they're plat settings. <laughs> Get pro settings and meet in the middle. You'll be diamond in no time. Obviously, most of these comments are sort of demanding that I turn camera shake off, but some were genuinely trying to be helpful. You should disable camera shake in the Rocket League settings. It helps you progress and gives the game a more stable feeling. Keep going, man. You got this. Turn off camera shake, adjust the height, and slow down. You'll get it. These comments are actually really nice. I genuinely didn't know such nice comments existed in the YouTube comments. Like, not trying to be toxic or anything like that. Just trying to be really helpful. Bro uses camera shake. Bronze. For real, for real. <laughs> Bro plays with camera shake. Yeah, that's more what I was expecting. The the highlight for me was definitely this though. Please! I'm begging you! Turn F camera shake! So it's quite clear. Some people are very passionate about turning off camera shake. Now I do believe that if you change certain camera settings, it will affect your gameplay. For example, I have um increased my field of view which means that I can see more of the, the field, I can see where players are, I can try to be more aware of where my teammates are to try and do better rotations. There are definitely settings that you can change which will improve your gameplay. But camera shake? I'm not convinced that that affects my gameplay. And I want to be very specific here, my gameplay. I can definitely imagine that the camera shaking would throw off people who are actually good at the game. So people who need to be able to have the perfect touches on the ball and all that kind of stuff, I could understand that they would be used to having certain camera controls and if the camera shakes in a weird way, that would throw them off. I can understand that. I just don't believe it would affect my gameplay. But I definitely acknowledge that for other people, it's different. Camera shake! I cannot imagine subjecting myself to that. Let me just remind myself what camera shake feels like. How do I get there? It's been a really long time since I've done anything with this. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Bro, it just fucks with my eyes. Okay. Uh, take that off. So before we go any further, we should probably look at what camera shake actually is. Um, I mean, it's sort of obviously in the name. It shakes the camera. But at what point does it? My understanding was that the camera shakes on any sort of action. So... Uh, whether there's a goal explosion, for example. Um, I also thought that the camera would shake when you hit the ball or get a boost pad or bump a player. But when I created some clips to sort of create a comparison, 
uh, I didn't see it. I really didn't see it. So I, I'm generally not, not sure. Um, but then with the opening clip of this video, that I could see, again, if I look very carefully, but I could see that the camera does shake. So I'm not sure. It doesn't seem consistent. But at some points, the camera will shake. I also had a viewer tell me that the the camera itself, so when you use the right stick to move the camera around, they said that that also is affected by camera shake, which, again, definitely I can't notice it. But if that is true, then that feeds more into my understanding that for higher ranked players, that would be a problem because they are using the camera to do better plays, like look around the field. So again, I could understand for other people it may be having an effect, but again, I can't I can't notice the difference. So my kind of expectation is that there is no effect on my rank from having camera shake on or off, despite people, vocal people, um, being adamant that it would do. However, that's just feelings. I don't have any quantifiable data, but. Ho oh, ho, would you look at that? We only went and did a full miserable month of March where I spent a month playing ranked to find out what my rank is. We could just do that again with camera shake turned on. And then we have two things that we can compare against. Now, I want it to be as like fair and above board as I can make it. And in my mind, the the best way to be able to test whether or not camera shake affects my gameplay would to be have two parallel universes where one of them we start the season with come shake turned off and we on the other we start the season with come shake turned on uh, and then see what the end results are there now please do forgive me i don't have parallel universes in my budget so the next best thing that i could think of is that we just continue from where we left off uh, and only play ranked. So during the miserable month of March, we were very lucky that the new season started at the beginning of March. So we were able to start with a nice clean slate. And so for this, I, I didn't play any Rocket League other than the ranked play that we did uh, for the miserable month of March. And then we played a new miserable month of May. And that did mean that there was a three week break in between where I didn't play any Rocket League because I didn't want to have any influence from any other game modes. I don't know whether there is any influence, but just to be sure, I played nothing but the official ranked games for the miserable month of May. I feel like this is sort of the best that I could do to try and keep it as fair of a comparison as possible, but there are obvious issues which we'll get into later. Um, but this was like as good as I could do reasonably. And so that's what I did. I uh, played ranked for another month um, and just kind of to give a summary of how it went. It, it was called the miserable month of May because I knew going in that it would be miserable and I can confirm it was definitely miserable. God fucking damn it! No relatives died this time, so I guess in that sense, technically better than the miserable month of March. And then my prediction was that, obviously, camera shake has no effect on my gameplay. And one thing I can definitely objectively say is that I do not notice camera shake while playing. I knew that I had to play ranked Rocket League, but I did keep forgetting that we were testing whether or not camera shake has an effect. And when I would remember that, I would then panic and think, wait, is it enabled? Are all these games defunct? And I would check and it would be fine. So one thing I know for sure is that I do not notice camera shake. So it doesn't have any effect on me, like by bothering me or anything like that, because I don't notice it. That I can say for a certainty. What I obviously can't say for a certainty, like straight off the bat, is whether or not it has a subconscious effect. Like, Maybe I don't notice it, but it still does affect me in some other way. And so that's what I'm hoping to find out from playing a month's worth of Rocket League, is to see whether, even though I don't notice it, does it still have a noticeable effect on my rank. So to that end, let's have a look at some of the graphs 
where we will compare the miserable month of March against the miserable month of May. So we've got our ones rank. The bottom blue line is the miserable month of March. So that's what my rank was like for the month with camera shake turned off. And then the pink line above it is the miserable month of May where we have camera shake turned on. And uh, there's also some trend lines. So the yellow line is like the trend for the miserable month of March. And then the cyan line, I guess, uh, is for the miserable month of May. So you can see that they're kind of similar. The trend line for having camera shake turned off is a bit flatter. And the flatter the line, the more sure we can be that that is what the rank is because we're sort of just the rank's not changing enough to shift it. And so for our initial ranked month, it was a bit more hectic. We obviously fell down to goal three for a bit, um, but we did then go up to plat two. So it's a bit more sporadic, whereas for this time, we stayed mostly in plat two. I don't think it's significant, but it does look kind of interesting that both of them seem to decline a little bit towards the end of week two. And then at the end of week two or the beginning of week three, it then has like a, a jump up. Um, they look like they almost kind of sit on top of each other quite nicely in that way. But I, I don't think that's significant. I think that's just, I think that's probably a coincidence. But who knows? We can talk about it more later, but essentially... It could be, have something to do with my mental. Looking at my twos rank, it looks really similar. Like they are very much entwined for the the whole thing. Like it's quite clear. You could get a fuzzy look of like where my rank is sitting. For this most recent month, you can see that the trend line is again quite flat. So a bit more sure of the rank. And then for threes, let's have a look, look under that. Um, we were clearly worse. So during the miserable month of March, we actually stayed in diamond one the entire time. Um, so it was quite consistent, our rank. Whereas uh, this time, I fell almost immediately down to plat three and essentially stayed there for the majority of the time. Um, although, in that sense, it's pretty flat. Again, the trend is not too steep. In my previous video, I mentioned that I wanted to try and create a bell graph of my ranks. So I was expecting it to fluctuate, but to build up like, I think it's called a Gaussian distribution, but essentially there's some variance, the more probable values build up sort of in the middle so it essentially lets you know where you're likely to fall but that didn't really work out because i just ended up with these spikes but it turned out i was thinking about the wrong thing what i should have actually been looking at is the standard deviation and that allows me to make these beautiful graphs these are the bell curves that i was originally expecting so the thinner and higher the graph, the more certain we are about the rank. Um, so this is for ones where above 40 is um, platinum. So, and again, blue is with camera shake turned off and pink is with camera shake turned on. We can see that we did spend some time in gold so below 40 but the majority of the time was in plat and we can also see that this time we are more sure of our rank and also it's uh completely within platinum similarly for rank two the bell curve for having camera shake turned off is slightly thinner and taller and also the two graphs are really close to each other. So we can be pretty sure where the rank sits somewhere within there. For these graphs, uh, anything over 52 
is in diamond. So again, for the camera shake turned off, we're a little less certain about the rank, but it's mostly in diamond. But for the camera shake being turned on, we're a little surer of the rank and it's still somewhere in diamond mostly. And then finally threes, we can see that unlike the other two, the rank is significantly lower for camera shake being turned off. And also surprisingly, we are less sure of this one. You can see the standard deviation for each of these graphs. So for the pink lines, the lines were, we have camera shake turned on. The values are very similar. So for threes, it was 1.272. For twos, it's 1.159. And for ones, it's 1.291. So ignoring how beautiful my graphs are and that they don't have consistent scale. You can see from the values that for this time around, all of the standard deviation was quite similar. Now, the lower the value, the better. And a value of one is equivalent to one division difference. So for example, if it's sat at plat three, division three, then the uncertainty is around plat three, division two, up to plat three, division four. So the standard deviation basically just reaffirms what we could see with the line graphs, which I guess is nice that the data matches up. So I've pulled together my summary of the different games. So for ones, we ended up being a whole rank higher, where our average rank was plat one division two with camera shake turned off. And with camera shake turned on, we were plat two division two. And as mentioned, we had more certainty of our rank. So again, there's the difference in standard deviation value. Although our average rank went up a whole rank, the average game score that we had, so the score that we get from goals and saves and all that kind of stuff, the average of that was lower by about 70 points. And we also lost more games than we won. As you can see from the value, it's sort of marginal. So it was still sort of half and half, but as you'll see across all three games, we ended up losing more games than we won, even though it's close to 50%. But that part was kind of consistent across the three game types, but we'll talk about that more in a sec. One thing that I did notice, especially for ones, is the number of forfeits. So you can see that in the miserable month of March, I only forfeited one game. I actively tried to not forfeit any games because I wanted to try and get a good reading of how I was going to play in that game. And if I forfeit it too early, then we don't get that full games data. But this time round, I just did not have the mental strength to put myself through it. So ended up forfeiting 13 games, which amounted to almost 13% of all, all the games that I played. So again, I'll talk about that more in a sec, but let's have a look at the two summary. So we can see a lot of similar trends, but the first thing is that for twos, our average rank was exactly the same, like diamond one, division one. But as with the ones we have more certainty of our rank, only slightly though. For this one, twos was, was quite similar. But again, our average score dropped by over 50. And also again, it's close to half and half, but it is less than half of the games that we won. And again, there was an increase in forfeited games, including how many games I or our team forfeited. Although it's not quite as pronounced as it was in ones. And then we go to threes, which unlike ones, we ended up a whole rank lower. So we went from diamond one division three to plat three division three. And then also, as we noted in March, our threes games were actually more certain. We had a lower standard deviation than we did this time around. And then also the average score was lower, just like the other ones, but it was already pretty low. So there wasn't much further down we could go. And then as with the other ones, we lost most of our games. 
but it's still close to 50-50. And actually, the forfeited games were pretty much identical. So I don't think, as a team, we were any more tilted than we were before. So what can we pull from that? By ranks, we were up in ones, the same in twos, and down in threes. So I don't really know what, what to pull from that, to be honest. Other than the fact that, like we sort of concluded in the last video, it's hard to sort of put a definitive, this is my exact rank. It's a lot fuzzier, a lot blurrier. But I think we can still be sure that we sit somewhere high plat. And although the amount of games that we won and lost, in all instances, it was close to 50-50, which I think is what you would expect if you were sitting at the right rank, because you would start to win some games, then you'd go against harder players and then drop back down until you started going up against players who you're definitely better than and go back up. So I think it's supposed to sit at around 50-50. But I did lose most of my games across all three of them was before I won most of my games across all three of them and my average score was lower across all three of them so I do think that in general it seems like I did play worse and so then that brings to the question why worse the the most obvious reason that is sort of the whole point of this video maybe it was camera shake maybe having camera shake turned on really did affect my gameplay. But even though it feels like I played worse, I don't think the results that we got show a clear enough trend of like, we were at this rank and then we dropped like, like multiple ranks. Like it didn't seem to have a huge impact on my gameplay. Certainly not to the extent that people would make you think in the comments. But also, as I mentioned at, at the beginning, this isn't a perfect comparison because the miserable month of March was at the start of the season, the very start, and the miserable month of May was at the end of the season. And so there are definitely different people in the mix. There are videos out there that suggest that you actually only start playing your ranked games towards the end of the season because the volatility of the beginning of the season will have settled out by then and then you can play against people who you should be playing against. So although I tried to have a, like a nice clean slate at the beginning of a season, maybe the people that I was playing against weren't the right people to be playing against. Although, as we saw, the, the results are quite close. So I don't think that has such a big impact, but I do think it's worth noting that probably the people we were playing against were slightly different ranks at the rank that they were playing at. Also worth noting is that there obviously have been updates since those two points, with the most significant being that the boost indicator had been added, which you would hope would improve the gameplay. Either way, that could have an effect on my gameplay. We don't know to what extent. And then, as I sort of hinted at, at the end of the last video, I have changed the controller that I'm playing with. So previously I used an Xbox 360 controller, which liked to have stick drift and disconnect, whereas now I'm playing with a PlayStation 5 controller, which feels slightly different to, to play with. So again, I don't know to what extent that had an effect on my gameplay. And then there's the three week break that I mentioned. That's I think Pretty sure that's the longest break of Rocket League I've ever had because since I started streaming Rocket League in like December 2021, um, I think the most is maybe two weeks, but certainly no longer than two weeks break. Um, so three weeks of absolutely no Rocket League is a long time for me to go not playing Rocket League. And so similarly, I don't know what effect that has. Um, I was aware of that fact going in, and so I had that in my mind when I started playing again. And I remember at the time thinking, actually, it feels like riding a bike. It felt like I could just play again at the level that I was at. So it didn't feel like it had a negative effect, but again, not sure. Then there's the broken down emotionally aspect. I called it the miserable month of May 
and I called it the miserable month of March because I knew that playing ranked was going to be miserable. But going into the miserable month of May, I had conclusive evidence that it's miserable. Having already played a month of ranked, I knew what I was getting into. And so it was a lot harder to stay strong, especially in those ones matches. And so perhaps I was even more miserable. Getting back to that point of whether I feel like I'm playing below my average, it's possible that I was playing below what I would have considered my average back in March, but I was just so miserable and just had such a low expectation of all the games that it just seemed where I should be sitting at, perhaps. And similarly, I don't think it matters whether or not I forfeit the game, because if I forfeit the game, I'm doing so because there's essentially no chance of, in my mind, of winning that game. And so I don't think that increased the number of losses that we have. However, the mental block that I think that might cause of giving up on the game, forfeiting the game, I think that that could then run into other games where I just have like a negative feeling. And part of the reason why I wanted to track my sort of mood slash ability is that I wanted to try and see whether or not my expectation that feeling better makes you play better could actually be tracked. But ultimately, I didn't have enough data to verify that. But it certainly is how I feel. Like, when I play really well, I'm usually en really enjoying the game. I'm usually in a really good mood. And when I'm playing really poorly, usually I'm not in a good mood. So, while those forfeited games were probably going to be losses anyway, I can't say for sure whether or not it had a knock-on effect and maybe caused me to lose more games than I would have done if I was in a better mood. And then the final point, this is Rocket League. There's no telling if I'd played this longer what the results will be. As we saw, the games were quite close to 50-50, but actually, so this is what the games look like after the first week. So at the top, we can see the ones, twos, and threes from the miserable month of March. And then below that, the ones, twos, and threes for the miserable month of May for the first week. And as you can see, the win-loss ratio was even worse. For ones, we played 26 games and we only won 12 of them. So 46.2%. For twos, we played 29 games and we won 12 of them, so 41.4%. And then for threes, we played 24 games. I was supposed to play 25, but I miscounted. And we only won eight of those games. So only a third of the games that we played, we won. So that was sort of the point of playing four weeks, is to try to spread it out over a longer period so that we can get a more sure version because there's going to be spikes in different directions but that's my point of if i'd done this for longer maybe it would have got closer and closer to like actually 50 percent maybe my average would be settling to a, a closer value so although i did it for four weeks and i did over 100 games of each type which for me was a lot about at the limit of what i could tolerate but if I needed better data, I would have to do it for an order of magnitude more. So, the big question, does Camera Shake affect my gameplay? Well, as with the previous video, I think the result is inconclusive. I obviously still don't believe that Camera Shake affects my gameplay, and so I refuse to admit defeat. But I also can't conclusively say it has no effect on my rank. Because from those two comparisons, it does seem like I played slightly worse. And also, anecdotally, after finishing those ranked games, I did then turn off Screen Shake and just play some casual, and I popped off. I was playing way better than I had done the whole month, it felt like. So that was kind of funny to me, but I'm going to do that thing that courts do, where they just sort of ignore stuff, they don't allow it to be added in as evidence even though it seems like it's pertinent to the case the judge is like no you're not allowed to you, you need to ignore that thing 
that clearly seems like it's very relevant. You're just, you're just going to ignore it, okay? And so that's what I'm going to do because we finished we finished the miserable month of May officially, and so anything after that is is hearsay. We're, we're ignoring it. So I think the result is I definitely can't see camera shake. I don't I don't notice it. And camera shake doesn't affect my gameplay in a significant way. I am interested in why people focus so much on camera shake, by the way. Because while I was recording videos to try and capture the camera shake, I noticed that when you're boosting, the camera does move in other ways. Um, like it just straight up shifts at some points and it also changes the field of view when you're going different speeds, which is changing the camera. It's changing what you can see. So it's interesting to me that people seem to focus on it. Similar to the comments, like, like I said, the, the more helpful ones sometimes talk about other elements. Like I said, the field of view, in my opinion, is one of the, the most important things people should change is so that they can see more of the field. But people don't talk about that. They can watch a video of me playing like utter shit and their one comment for how I can play better is to turn off camera shake. I'm just, yeah, I'm leaving this completely unconvinced that that's a thing. As I said at the beginning, I do understand that people do notice it a lot more than I do and that they don't like it. And clearly they're very vocal about that. But I don't think what they're saying is valid. And also with most things, it's usually just a vocal minority. As I was doing this miserable month of May, I had people coming into my streams and telling them about what I was doing. And the vast majority of them don't care. Most of them do prefer having it turned off, but their response was, it's preference, it's up to you, do whatever you feel like, which I feel like should be the norm. That should be where people are at. And so I don't think this is actually as big of a problem as it can appear to be online when it comes to people commenting that camera shake should be turned off. And so that's where I'm going to kind of leave it. Fortunately for me, there's no more months with M in it, I don't think. So I don't need to play any more ranked this year. I mean, I'm still going to do my placement matches, but uh, definitely not going to do anything like that again. It was so miserable. Um, if there's any data geeks out there who are interested in all the data that I collected, I am going to link in the description the spreadsheet that I produced, which you can either see as HTML or CSV. But with that, I'm fucking, I'm, I'm done. I'm so, I was so happy to get back to just playing regular ass Rocket League. Um, I don't understand how people can play thousands of games of ranked Rocket League. What a fucking miserable experience that is.